Much of why we are here today is thanks to our primitive ancestors, who learnt to hunt, fish, forage and farm for food to survive. 2000 years ago, life was very different, but thanks to the team at Butzer Ancient Farm, they have created a gateway into the past by creating a unique experimental archaeology site that sits amongst the rolling countryside of the South Downs National Park. The working farm allows you to gain a glimpse into life in the Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, Roman and Anglo-Saxon period. The incredible historical architecture has been built with traditional techniques that are still used in Britain to this day. Join me as I take you on a journey through time and unravel the history of what life was like in ancient Britain. This 15 by 7 metre Stone Age structure was inspired by the early Neolithic Horton House, which was excavated and discovered by Wessex archaeology. It was one of four early Neolithic houses found at Kingsmead Quarry in Horton, Berkshire, which dated back to 3800 BC, making it one of the most important Neolithic sites in the history of England. Here at Butzer Ancient Farm, the team have reconstructed the Horton House design, based on the post holes and foundation trench that was excavated by Wessex archaeology. This is a very impressive build. It was constructed with a mixture of ancient techniques such as wattle and daub and traditional thatching. When this house was originally built, the landscape of Britain would have looked far different to what it does today. With farming still being a very new technique, the landscape would have been largely forested. The community that settled at this site would have fished, farmed, hunted and foraged for their food. Here are Simon and Therese to tell you more about the design and construction of this incredible Neolithic house. Okay, welcome to Butts Ancient Farm and we're standing outside our Stone Age house, the Halton House. It's a reconstructed Neolithic home that was excavated. It was excavated in a place called Horton Quarry uh, near Heathrow Airport over in Berkshire. And uh, Simon said it's Neolithic, so dating to around 3800 BC. So early Neolithic and discovered in what is now a quarry, but back in the day it was mm. in one of the kind of meanders of the River Thames. So quite a Brilliant. busy place archeologically. That's it. So we were going back in, I think about 2018, Wessex archaeology that we're excavating in the, in the quarry came across this uh, I don't know, shattering in, in, in the gravel as such of this Stone Age house, basically. You could see it straight away, it was a dwelling. What you've got is discoloration in the gravel and the soil of an outline of the building and where the doorway, you can see the wear patterns in. Normally we can find where the fireplace is, is as well. And so we take that evidence and we can reconstruct it from there. I was saying earlier that we were looking a lot of our buildings on site. We've been going for about 50 years. We used to use a lot of oak, a lot of ash. Ash died back, we can't get hold of it at the moment. Or not at the moment, we can't get hold of it at all. <laughs> but it was, um, it was, so we were looking at different materials. And the great thing is that we've been using um, Scots pine in this. It's a great native tree, it's a pioneering tree as well. Uh, it's super strong, lasts, it's, and it's great to work with really nice straight stuff as well. So it uh, works very well. So you can see a lot of Scots pine in the construction of this, apart from the doorways, where there's a little bit of oak there, um, as well as hazel as well. So it's wattle and daub, so hazel in the back of this, and then the daub made of clay, a bit of dung, a bit of hair. You can see all sorts of bits and pieces here. And then it's covered with a clay paint and different uh, natural pigments. And one of the things that we like to do is experiment with not just the materials, but the different types of pigments, how well they go on these kinds of surfaces, how well they last. And as you can see, this one's in need of a bit of repair, so it gets a battering during the winter mm. and stuff, and then we'll give it a refresh in the spring. I think that's quite the interesting thing as well. We're talking about maintenance is that when we put these buildings up, it's, they do require a lot of maintenance. And it's not something you can go, oh, that's going to be fine for the next five years. You know, you've got to go over, you've got to get winter proofed as yeah. well, sort of thing. So we make sure we're sealing up our gaps and yeah. keeping them nice and warm, nice and safe. And just constantly monitoring and keeping an eye and replacing when it needs to replace straight away. You know, um, it doesn't last forever, but you can, can make it sure it lasts for a long time if you can keep on top of that maintenance all the time. And you were saying earlier about the split hazel. This yeah. is not done with the conventional kind of bill hook. No, so our, uh, Darren, our local uh, tree writer, our, our coppice expert, um, 
didn't put his bullock away for the for the for the day and got used some flint tools just a, a simple flint uh hand knife he did, didn't have any thinking like a, it wasn't put into wood or anything like that like a handle he just used the flint blade and he split out all this hazel and he did it fairly quickly as well within a few hours he had it done so they're nice deer skins uh a few of them stitched together and they do they hold out the draft quite well actually yeah. I think it's the line bass. Is it line bass, isn't it? We yeah. yeah. used yeah. on that. That's brilliant. Yeah. And you're saying, obviously, you, you can't make tons of line bass for, for every lashing here. No. The principle's the same. Of what, what we try and do is take on elements throughout the build in itself. It becomes very, very expensive if you go all the way through from start to finish. We have done on certain buildings, but something this side, we just take elements and see what we can do. So um, in certain points of the framing, um, we, we will use flint tools, we will use bone uh, or chisels to get make create holes and things like that and we use natural fibre and we can re recreate that. But to push it on, in, because in modern times we've got financial restrictions, we, we use other means to, to get it there. But. So uh, it looks like uh, thatching wise you've gone for water reed. Yes, yeah. Which would have been, like you say, available. Available around there. Um, so as you were saying, it's near a miranda of a uh, to, towards the, the River Thames, yeah, so we're in a yeah. big wetland area. So we're making the assumption of, yeah, we've, we've certainly been using lots of water reed on there as well. So and there's a whole six tonnes on this building, so yeah. it's uh, quite the investment. So isn't it? Yeah, it is definitely. It yeah. was quite simple actually to construct. You know, the, you know these. Uh, well, I mean, we the sort of the five main A-frames quickly gone up um, with the um, roof rafters going across to stop that kind of racking and that so it, it, in terms of construction the, the main construction was fairly quick we it was within a on and off within a few weeks um like i said was, when it comes to the thatching that's what slows the whole whole project down but it's it's a big building it's great with that height that helps with um keeping the smoke levels above your head yeah. so you're not sitting in that smoke all the time so it works really well yeah yeah, so we basically based it off the archaeology, which was kind of fairly scant. But one of yeah. the challenges was that in the archaeology, it showed just six main post holes on the outside. And one of the big questions was, how does a big structure, so it's nearly 17 metre long, mm. how does that stay up or how, what does it look like? So we worked with Wessex Archaeology, who got all their kind of high tech, fancy CAD systems out oh, wow. to mock up different possibilities. Mm. And in the end, it was decided that this A-frame worked really well. Um, and there was also evidence in the archaeology for kind of slot trenches. So as Simon said, kind of just shadowing. So we thought the A-frame kind of fitted really well. And what will be interesting eventually when the building dies and, yeah. and goes away, we will look at what's left and feed that back into how it compares to the original yeah. archaeology. And then in the, in the um, archaeology, there was this kind of evidence for this partition. So there was a suggestion that there was some partition. We don't know exactly why. Uh, some theories are that animals would have been living in one side of it and then uh, humans in the other. Um, we, we don't bring the animals in here, but yeah. uh, you know, it's one possibility. And that's, I suppose, one of the important things that we do is that we are an experimental centre. So everything we do, we explain, pos you know, we explore possibilities, but it's never the definitive answer. We, sure. Yeah, we'll it's never a suggestion. Know. We it's never a know. That's exactly yeah. that. Best, yeah. best guess yeah. and yeah. One, one possibility. Yeah. One of the things you can see here, are some of the tools that we use so these are all flint tools that were used in the construction and then we have other things like these really cool cow bone scapulas which have been fashioned into a hose and then you can turn them the other way to make shovels yeah and they work really really they well really, they? they work yeah. very well yeah, yeah. you can scrape yeah. back the ground and then another little flint one that's what this one's been well worn yes <laughs> someone's put that to good use uh, yeah, yeah. But again, they, they can be really simple. They don't have to be complicated, you know, no. high quality napping. It's just a really nice sharp edge. Yeah. It doesn't take long in terms of when you're using those tools that you can quickly get a split down the handle and things like that. So we, I, I see a little reason to, to kind of put hours and hours and days into effort to make the perfect handle for you to only hit the wrong spot or yeah, hit yeah, it wrong yeah. and it to split out straight away yeah. you just want you to make something quick get on yeah. let's get a roof above our heads basically stuff like the um the saddle quern down yeah. there for for, for um grinding down any grain and we can oh, get all yeah. seeds that we got so they would have used this um on there let's push that away, but it's that kind of that action there on there so the earliest form, so you get a lot of rotary querns, which you'll see in, in the later periods, yeah. but this is the very kind of 
and the saddle the corn in there, and yeah. that's for any seeds, grains to crush down to. And again, in the Neolithic, yeah. we're talking about a period when cereal farming is coming into the yeah. country, so people are beginning to grow crops, keep yeah. animals. Yeah. So that would have been a pretty important tool, actually. I mean, we make it more communal. Like I said, we get visited by thousands of school, school children. So in terms of the seating and the skins like that, that's purely for their um, for their needs, really. Um, and, and that to sort of sit down to, and it gives that more communal. But you could imagine if there was a, a family, an extended family living in here, you know, you've got uh, just different areas. You would have had your personal effects, really, yeah. your, your dresses, things like that, boxes that they certainly find evidence for. So it would have been filled with, all sorts to make your what what makes you makes your home basically yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was definite yeah. evidence for like domestic use so there sure. was pottery evidence yeah. um so we, we know certainly that people were living in here yeah, yeah so we got the wattle and daub on there um and which is um was it's fairly thick in that so but above that this is this is quite nice and it's it's great when the sun shines through it that that's our skin window that's and we've used fish oil to kind of really kind of bring that and give it the flexibility and that light kind of shines through just gives a bit of extra light through the through the house in itself so that's brilliant yeah i like the different tones in it as well it's lovely yeah. isn't it yeah yeah because we don't we, we we can't forget about color you know sometimes people paint the past as it's been a very you know it's brown <laughs> it's brown yeah. everyone's wearing hessian sacks and everything is a bit <laughs> bit dirty yeah. and brown but we we know for sure that people yeah. had a great appreciation for color in terms of use of pigments and and i think this is a lovely one as you say when the sun shines through it just creates the most glorious nice. light that's wattle and daub but here we just tested because there was no evidence of daub yeah. or any kind of walling right. so we just had the post holes and a, a couple of bits and pieces of artifacts but on this side we've used um, hewn planks and they've been kind of caulked, if you like, with things like we've experimented with um, moss and fat, moss and that, yeah. clay, um, other bits and pieces of materials to see how long they last and to see how kind of effective they are to keep all of that wind out. And we renew that, we kind of monitor it and understand if they work or not. So for example, the clay we found dries really quickly, falls out, isn't much use. Yeah. The moss performs quite well. Yeah. Moss with fat is really, really good, yeah. it stayed in there. Um, so yeah, that's a kind of a, a work in progress let's say it was really hard because we also got hit by the pandemic at the same time we i think i i remember it was um by christmas of 2018 almost you know beginning of 2019 you know we were starting to put the, the mainframe up and then i think we were well on we just started thatching as we went into sort of march now we're not on it every single day we got other chores to go around to around on the site and then we get halfway through and it got stopped and i think we had a, i don't know a, a, it, 20% of the thatch on and that sure. and all of a sudden we're, we've closed down we're not allowed to work and but we had to keep on coming in um people working on their own basically yeah. keeping a while away and um and and over the up to the summer I would say we had it finished off by then okay. yeah. But yeah join me in the next episode where we look towards the bronze age and how various building techniques might have been implemented during this era if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and be sure to check out more videos like this one in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.